Hello and welcome to this week's edition of the Coach's Preview Show. It's the first of 2019 and the first of the basketball season. 11 AAA action is heating up. We have a great game tonight. Brentwood at Independence. Coach Miles Thrash, uh, coach of the Lady Bruins of Brentwood. Whitney Baird, head coach of the Independence Eagles, Lady Eagles. Welcome to the show. Welcome to 2019. And welcome to 11 AAA play, right? Because it is right now we are in the thick of things. Uh, let's talk about you, uh, since you're the uh, uh, traveling coach coming in tonight, Coach Thrash, let's talk about your team. You're sitting 12-5, and 5-2 five, five and two in 11-triple-A play, number three right now. You've got sole possession uh, behind Dixon and Page. I know you look forward to playing uh, those two teams later, yeah. but tonight you got a good test with Independence. Independence is coming in with some wins uh, over Spring Hill and Centennial in 11-triple-A play. Talk about your team. Uh, what, what, you know, nobody has – if nobody's seen your team, tell us about your starting lineup and, and, and who's playing well. Well, we've been playing pretty good as of late. We want to try to get off to a quick start, but for the most part, my starting lineup, Amelia Oscar, their point guard, she's been playing very steady for us consistently. She's been leading the team. We've asked her to do a lot as far as leadership role goes, and she's done a great job in taking over that role. Of course, we have the Trusha twins. They've been playing tremendous for us. They've taken on a bigger leadership role as being some of the elderly girls on the team now. You know, as versus coming in last year, they were a lot more younger and they weren't asked to do as much with Izzy, Oz with Izzy being there as well. So, you know, and we got a replacement and starter, Haley Hanna. She's a freshman, very athletic. She's brought a different dynamic to our team. She's made us faster and we get up and down, play a lot faster now. So, and with Chloe, she's our pit bull, you know, she's our defender, she's our rover. So. We, we've kind of trying to put it together right now, and that's about it. Well, you hit a little rough patch there right before Christmas, and we all know we have to break down the season into thirds. you gotta, you got the before Christmas session, you've yeah. got the after Christmas session, and then you've got the district tournament. Yeah. And the truth in reality is, is we were kind of joking off, off air, is you could literally go winless mm -hmm. and come February, win that first game, and, and, yeah. and all else goes away. It felt, you, oh, know, yeah. you can fade away. So you can't take any night – Lightly at all, especially when it comes to district tournament. But we look at your team, Amelia Osgood averaging 18, the Trucial Twins, Emily 15, uh, Delaney averaging 13. So you've got three in double digits. Osgood, sophomore. Yes. And the Trucial Twins are juniors. juniors. I mean, uh, if you haven't beaten Brentwood this year, you better beat them because I feel like next year you're going to have the favorite team probably coming back with the youth. You just mentioned uh, Hannah, who is a freshman that's starting yeah. in that starting role. So you're starting right now four underclassmen. Is your fifth an underclassman as well? Yes. So uh, uh, get your punches in now, if you will. Summit, I, I was talking about Summit boys, same way. They're starting four or five. They're, they're stop, their top eight in their rotation are all okay. underclassmen. And, it, 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 you know, you can't put a price tag on the fact of not only starting but playing heavy, heavy minutes in the rotation, 11 AAA, as an underclassman. Mm -hmm. You know, you had some of these girls two years ago, six months removed, uh, yeah. uh, playing in the WMAA, and now here they are playing 11 AAA. Coach Baird, let's talk about your team for a moment. You've got, like I said, you got wins over Spring Hill and Centennial. Uh, I, I know Casey Lidl, 10 points per game, household name here. You know, she's coming back as your kind of your returning uh, 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 leading scorer. Talk about the rest of your, your, your team right now. Sure. Um, Kelsey's kind of leading us right now in scoring and uh, – you know, she's taking on that role of being our offensive player. And then um, our usual point guard that starts, Daisha McAdams, she's uh, done a good job of stepping in this year and being a leader at the point guard position and uh, really getting us into our offenses and um, being a calming influence on the floor. Uh, she's been out the last couple games with just a minor injury. And um, so stepping into her place is another starter, Grace Sanchez. Um, Grace has been my point guard the last couple games, and she's done a good job stepping in and filling those big shoes. She's our defensive specialist. She usually guards the best player on the other team, um, be it four, one through four, and um, she's just one of those really tough, gritty players. Um, my other starters are Amanda Halet and Kelsey, or I'm sorry, Kayla Miller, and um, they are just Amanda's leading the team right now in rebounds. Um, she just has a, she has a really good sense of where the ball is going to go. She goes and gets it. And then Kayla is a junior this year, um, and she is slowly starting to come into her um, ability. She's uh, my post player. She's 
six foot, six one, and she's uh, it's finally starting to click with her. And so it's fun to see her get better every game. And um, she's uh, leading, she's second, leading our team second in scoring. And uh, she's right there rebounding too. So, you know, um, a little bit older lineup than uh, Miles has, but, uh, you know, we're uh, getting better every game and we're working on, uh, still working on just meshing together as a team. Uh, Coach Thrash, over the over the holiday break, you went and played in some uh, pretty stiff competition. Mm -hmm. I mentioned you hit a little bump in the road. I hate to hate to keep harping on it. You did lose four of, la of the last six, but you came in uh, t tonight's game. You beat Centennial 70-21. It seems like the, the ship is righted now. Mm -hmm. Talk a little bit about the, 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 the holiday break and the games that you played. Well, the holiday break, you know, I think it really helped our team a lot. We needed to get away and, you know, because, like you said, we stumbled over the holiday break well, going into it or whatever, lost a couple of big district games. And we needed a really good look. And, and we had a really good week of preparation and practice going into the She Got Game Classic, which is a big time national tournament. That was tournament. in Alabama, right? It's in Atlanta. Oh, Atlanta, pardon It's me. in Atlanta, Georgia, yeah. So it was a lot of stiff competition. Some of the nation's top teams, which we take, we went one and one and we split and we lost in overtime in um, Saturday's night's um, game against West Ridge Academy out of North Carolina. I think they were ranked like seventh in the country. So it was a really good game, and it was a really good experience for some of our girls. You know, and, and for our team, we needed that to get our identity back and, and kind of get back into things. You know, I, 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 there's two schools of philosophy when it comes to those, those holiday break games. You know, mm -hmm. we had some of our coaches, uh, Summit, for instance, decided and elected not to play over the break, to mm -hmm. do preparation, to do some practice. Mm -hmm. uh, what school of thought do you think on that? I mean, sometimes you can go in, and it can harm your team. If you mm -hmm. don't play well, it could really set a bad tone coming into mm -hmm. the second part of the season. Or the opposite effect of that is if you play well, you know, it could really get you yeah. springboarded in front of everybody. Well, I talk with my assistant coaches about this situation. As far as we got, what we have in Williamson County, you know, we got some great academic schools. We got a lot of kids that coming into that week, right into the break, you know, they're in finals week. So they have a lot of pressure on themselves. And there's some tough games also going into that week. So. It's mentally drained for them, and I think that's what happened to our team. It was so much more going on at one time, and then we just, with us being so young, we couldn't put it together to make sure we put on the right performance on the court. And sometimes if you're not there mentally, you just won't be there physically. And I think that's the hurdle we hit, you know. But hopefully everything, we're riding the ship now and look forward to competing with them. Coach Baird, you're coming in and you beat Spring Hill on Tuesday night, 59-29. Talk a little bit about that game and what that did for your, your girls mentally. Yeah, I mean, anytime you uh, get a win, I think it um, boosts your confidence and, um, you know, helps out in that aspect of the game. Um, just, uh, you know, we just try to keep working on ourselves is the big thing, is, you know, trying to, I guess one of the big things that I've been trying to get them to do since I've been here is just play as a team. And we're starting to do that now where we're five we're a unit on the team, we're not five individuals. Mm -hmm. And I think that uh, we made some big strides live Tuesday night in that game. Um, so yeah, looking forward to, excited to go into this like last, you know, we've pretty much seen everybody once, Brentwood's, I think y'all are the last one, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that will, this will be the first time we play yep. them. And then, you know, we've, matched up against everybody and now we can try to figure out what we can do differently the second time we play them. Right, I've had that, that brought up many times when you're talking to coaches, you know, once you get through that first half of the district season, once you've played mm -hmm. everybody once, what is that magic number? What's that magic loss number that you feel like you feel really good with? On the boys' side, you know, you feel like uh, if you can get through that first half with, with two or less, you have really got a leg up. I feel like on the girls' side, if you look at that breakdown, it's about the same number, two or three losses uh, on the first go-round and then maybe shave one off on that second. You got a really, really good look yeah. at seeding coming to district tournament. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's it's one of those things that, that you look at it, you know, got Paige sitting in first right now, Paige playing really good basketball. Mm -hmm. uh, they've gone through this first half with one loss. Dick's in the same way. Uh, like I said, Brentwood's sitting in third right now at four and two uh, summit really playing good basketball. I think that's kind of a shocking surprise. I think the preseason poll had Summit about sixth or seventh, and now here they are sitting in, in fourth right now on the first half of the of the district play. Franklin is uh, a fifth, Ravenwood sixth, Indy seventh, Centennial eighth, and Spring Hill ninth. Now, if we played it today, 
Obviously, the 8-9 game would be Centennial Spring Hill. Indy would uh, – uh, you guys would draw Dixon in that second – that 2-7 game. Brentwood would play uh, Ravenwood, Battle of the Woods. I know – we all know deep down there is not an ideal situation that you really mm -hmm. want. And if you had to play that Battle of the Woods game in the first round of the, of the district, that would probably make you a little nervous, wouldn't it? Well, me, probably not, but <laughs> – we look forward to that challenge. We, we, my team right now, where we are, we are really looking forward to that challenge. We kind of, especially some of the games, we feel like we let slide and we drop. We're really looking forward to getting back and playing that competition. So. Well, I like to hear that because I know you want that mentality. Those two losses yeah. are not sitting well with you right now. No, you're, you're, you're counting it down. You've circled the calendar. But before we get to that game, let's talk about tonight. What do we yeah. expect? I'm going to start with the home team. What do we expect coming in? You know, what are we going to do? Uh, you don't have to give away your complete game plan, but let's talk a little bit. Give me a scout <laughs> report on Brentwood. Uh, well, we're going to um, – huh, I mean, if you – we have huddle. Everybody has huddle now, so we can watch game film on each other. Sure. Um, I mean, if you watch, one of the big things that we need to do for ourselves is we've got to make easy shots. We get tons of looks inside, in, you know, in the paint, and we just have trouble finishing that. So – Again, you know, I, I say it a lot. People probably are like, is that all she, is that all she can say? But we gotta, we got to focus on ourselves. And we got to make – There's a lot of truth in that, though. You know, we got to make those easy shots. We get the looks. We've just got to, you know, finish those looks. And then we've got to play solid defense. we got to know where their scores are. They've got three. That makes it a little difficult to um, – I mean, you know, like usually you can kind of focus on one or two, and if you can shut those down, you, you know, you, you have a, an, a chance. And um, Brentwood, you know, they've got three powerful scorers, and, you know, we're just going to we're gonna do our best to shut them down, know where they are on the floor, one shot, push the ball up the floor, execute on offense. Coach Strash, same question to you uh, coming into Independence. Let me ask you this question first. You like it, it, this is probably a, a, a not a very smart question, but home or away? Which one do you like to play best? We love away. It, see, I thought you'd say home. I was the same way. I always like playing on the road for some reason. My team, we love the way. If, if we played our best basketball away, you feel like the pressure's a off a little bit. Yeah, we we like the fact that you know we've embraced the back against the wall mentality. Okay. You know, so in order to win the state championship or even to get there, you have to be able to play on the road. It's a great philosophy. So we try to instill that in our players to be able to ex be excited when you go on the road. And it's been easy for us so far to go out and compete at a high level on the road, but sometimes we go through those mental hurdles and it's tough. And the emotional part of it, we can't get over that part. So we, we're still working on that. But as far as tonight's game, we know it's going to be a well-coached game. She does a tremendous job with her group of girls and the system she has, we have to come in and focus on the details, the little things that we need to do to execute. So I'm, I'm just like her. I'm, I'm more on our team and, and our execution, you know, things we got to get better at, you know, take care of the ball and, and, and doing a better job of getting back on defense and boxing out and rebounding as a unit. So we're really looking forward to the challenge. It will not be an easy challenge. So we, we're ready. It's going to be a great game. They tip off at this at Independence Brentwood Lady Bruins versus the Lady Eagles of Independence tonight, 6 o'clock at Independence. Thank you. You are officially off the hot seat. Great job. When we get back from break, we'll visit with the boys' coaches. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Hello and welcome back to the Coach's Preview Show. Now we're going to the boys' side of the action tonight for the game of the week. Brentwood at Independence. Coach Greg Shirley is with us and new rookie to the show, <laughs> Coach Doug Kyle of the Independence Eagles. Let's talk real quick. Uh, Coach Shirley, 14-4, and 6-1. and one. You're currently sitting number two in 11 AAA. And I also rank number five in the mid-state polls. Now, I know we don't like to – we're going to do some coach speak, right? This is how it works. <laughs> uh, we don't care about that. But it is important. And I want to talk about the uh, importance of district seating. This 11 AAA group is really, really – you look at it from top to bottom. Uh, when I say bottom, uh, in, the, in the Wilco perspective, let's take Spring Hill out of the conversation for a moment, uh, include Dixon in that. I mean, anybody any, – any night. There's not a night off, really. Without a doubt. It's, my quote I say to every reporter, hey, it's Williamson County basketball. Every night's going to be a dogfight. Um, I know Friday night I'm expecting a very challenging game, and I expect that every night out. 
And this is a prime example. People want to put stock in, in records, right? Coach Kyle, 6-11, and 11, 3 and 4, people are like, well, this won't even be a game. Well, Coach Kyle, you've got a huge couple of huge wins on your belt, Centennial being one of those. Uh, you know, that is a, a great win. Also, I think people don't put enough stock in the Dixon win. Dixon County is going to be – we all knew that. The preseason poll had them ranked in the middle of the pack, top four maybe, and, uh, and they're sitting currently right now in number four spot. I would hate to know that I had a first-round district – tournament game with Dixon because they're a very deadly team, but you've got a good win over them already. Well, you know, we're starting to come around. We're, we're playing a lot better. Um, we're kind of learning the system and knowing what's going on and learning how to win. It's, it's a process for us. And, uh, you know, even at the beginning of the year, we started 0-8. And, uh, you know, but we, we were in every game. We just didn't know how to win and put a full 32 minutes together. Um, and through Christmas, right before Christmas, the Nolensville win, and then Centennial, it's big. and uh, so we, we're on a pretty good run and feeling good about. What, we don't always play well, but the kids are always working hard. They may not play well, but they work hard and play hard all the time. And you don't mind coaching play together, day, right? And, and that's right. That's a testament to the job that you're doing. You're talking about you start 0 and 8. A lot of people fold tents, man. You've got about a six, seven game window there that you have to have a little pay dirt. You know, you're preaching this, you're preaching this, you're preaching this, and you keep falling short, come falling short. So the kids can go one or two directions. They can say, I'm done, you've grinded us down, you know, we're just gonna mail it in. Well, they, you know, they've, from that, we've won six of our last nine. So there's a big jump, you know, from there. So uh, uh, they are, I'm, I'm proud of them. They're just great young men and uh, work hard. To some senior leadership, junior leadership, all the way through. Everybody's just trying to help us win ball games and get better. and. And uh, I'm really proud of what they've done. Coach Shirley, you're on the road tonight. Let's talk about your team coming in. Arguably the, the, the largest team in the district. You, you cause a, a nightmare for matchup problems all over the place, especially on the perimeter when you have guards that range from 6'3 to 6'6 with Harry Lackey and those guys uh, uh, on the wings. And Jack Thurman obviously poses a problem on the offensive end. Ben Mills playing really good double-double machine for you. Uh, so talk a little bit about your team. Yeah, I have six seniors have been great leaders of the program. They are all in the rotation. And and then you mentioned, uh, you know, Harry Lackey, that's getting better every day, and uh, John Winley, who's really stepping in, that are underclassmen. You know, I feel like I have eight different players that can actually start for me that I feel very comfortable in the game. So it, uh, we've been through the battles beforehand, and um, I love my team. Well, right now, Jack Thurman averaging 15.6. He's your guy that's – and that's no, um, you know, mystery to any of the coaches. They all knew coming back that Jack was going to be uh, an all-district player, preseason pick that as well. And, uh, uh, matter of fact, I think he was also voted as co-MVP preseason-wise. Pre and he's going to make a case for it all the way through. And you knew that going in. You've got some other guys, uh, uh, Harry Lackey averaging right under 10 points a game. Uh, so I mean, you're you're offensively you're scoring high points. You know you're in that in that range. Now last night, uh, Tuesday night's game uh, was not a, a necessarily a high scoring game for you, but you're averaging that 65, 70 points a game. That's a lot. You start looking at that. You you know you on the other hand, a little different, maybe lower, trying to keep that thing around. So how do we how do we how do we combat that? The high scoring teams length. What what are you, what, what are you going to try to do? Without well, giving too much. You know, I mean, <laughs> seriously, our guys are going to work hard. And, and, you know, scoring, it just depends from game to game as how for us. Um, we we take each game independently um, for independence. I'm sorry. Um, but, <laughs> okay, good. Uh, so, but, uh, you know, they're so, it's such a huge challenge uh, tonight. Uh, they're so big at every position, they're, they're, they're experienced. Um, they can post you up, they can take you outside. Um, so we're defensively, we're in for a great challenge, and we're going to have to be very disciplined, both defensively, rebounding, and then as well as taking care of the ball in our shot selection. So let's talk about your team, Matt St. Charles, one of those guys that are uh, leading for you. Talk about talk about your group. Who's leading you in scoring right now? Who, who's your who's your motors? Who's your hearts? You know, that's the funny thing is that every, any given night it's a different guy. You know, right. Matt and and Matt St. Charles, as you mentioned, um, Jack Sisson has yep. done some stuff for us. Uh, Connor Rudolph, we've. Preston Garner, we have everybody just stepping up. We've had seven different leading scorers throughout the year. Um, so and so, we don't know what it's come from. That's kind of a blessing and a curse a little bit because you, you want to have somebody that you can count on consistently and who you're going to go to. But uh, but we, we figure it out throughout every, each game. So uh, it's exciting, and they play together for each other. So, uh, 
you know, we're, we're enjoying it. Coach, this is your first time on the show. Give, give our, our viewers a little bit of a, a background of where you've come from. What, Everywhere. What, what jobs you've done? Uh, <laughs> well, uh, prior to being an assistant last year at Independence, I was a head coach at Glencliff mm -hmm. for five years. Um, and I was prior to that, I was at Lebanon for eight. Um, so you've seen two of our districts that we're connected to in right. some form or fashion mm -hmm. in the region and then obviously in the sub-state. Can you rank which, what do you think the better basketball is? I know, I know I get it every year, ebb and flow of public, you know, some years, some are better, but as, as, a, as a group and as a whole. Well, the, there is no more competitive, let's go from that standpoint, district than our district right here. Um, you know, top to bottom, it's competitive. Everybody's well coached, everybody works hard. Um, and, and that is easy to say. From top to bottom, it's clearly the most competitive district in mid-state, I would say. Uh, I cut you off. Finish. I'm sorry. You said Lebanon. You were at Lebanon for. Oh, and I was at, for eight years. I was at Warren County for three. Okay. So, but prior to that, as as head coaching, and so those were some head coaching stops. Uh, Coach Shirley, you know, Coach Shirley comes from Orlando. Won many games down there. Uh, Coach Shirley, talk about it as well. I know it's probably night and day, the style of play maybe, or the athletes that you're you're coaching. But as far as competitiveness, talk a little bit about what you're seeing now, man. You've been here for what? How many years now? This is my fourth year. This is your fourth year. So you've been through the ground for four straight years, and it hasn't changed, has it? I mean, it's every night. Every single night. I did not realize how strong, especially, for example, Independence would be this year. Um, they play as hard as anybody. I mean, they are a very athletic group. You know, you talk about some it's how young but athletic they are. Page plays tough, too. I mean, Ravenwood, Coach Whitlock, puts the players in the right positions, a good post player. And, you know, I knew the Franklins and the Centennials and Dixon's had the same players for the last couple of years. Right. But you can go all the way down the list. You know, we t we're talking about district seedings. I don't want to play any of them. But, you know, whoever <laughs> we play, we're going to be the best run what team we can be. Well, I think, I think something that separates us, too, if, as you go to these games, particularly the Metro, uh, you, you start looking at I, I think our atmospheres that are created at these games, I go back and you look at Rivalry Friday, you look at the Summit, you know, the border battle game. I mean, you go to uh, not, even, not even the Ravenwood game. You take that off the map because it's, it's a given. I don't care if both of you are over for the season. You know people are going to show up for that game. But you go back to that, you mentioned the Franklin. That atmosphere at Franklin seemed like a, a, a do or die, go home, lose or go home style game. And it was in November, late November. So I think our atmosphere, our student sections, our uh, – fans that come out to the games, I think that separates us a lot from uh, some of the people we play. Absolutely. It, it, it's really fun for the kids and makes them want to be part of it, makes them want to play harder. And it, it's just an, an enjoyable experience for everybody. And uh, that is what's special about this league. Well, you're sitting in eighth place right now currently. I, I did it for the girls, so let's do it for the guys. Let's play the what if game, right? Uh, uh, excuse me, you're in seventh place and Summit's in eighth. So that means the Summit uh, a Spring Hill Showdown would take place, and then that would the winner of that would get the number one seed. Currently, right now, just as it sits, Franklin. But you're both sitting at one loss. I know you've got that game circled. I don't want you to look too far in the future because we've got this game tonight. But uh, you know, Independence would play. Uh, Y'all would face each other in the first round of the district if it was played tonight. And there's no game that's going to make you less nervous or more nervous than the other because they're all, especially that first round game is nerve-wracking, but uh, it just it goes to show the parity of the league. So, with that being said, Coach, you are the visiting coach. Give me a scouting report on Independence. They play hard. The key is being able to handle the pressure because they put a ton of pressure on you. They press as hard as anybody I've seen, then they get back and really try to protect the basket. Um, it is hard to prepare for them because they do have so many players that can score. Yeah, you know, they have several people that can step out and shoot, but they attack the basket also. So I know we're going to have to be able to match their intensity. We're, I know we're going to be pressed from the beginning of the game, and I know that we will face a team that will share the basketball and knock shots down. Very well coached. Coach Kyle, same to you. Scott report on Brentwood. Very smart, hardworking, talented, I mean, you experienced uh, – can do it all, can find different ways to uh, to attack you offensively and defensively. Uh, we're just looking at how many different sets they run um, and different actions and getting different people in the right situations. Great 
hardworking kids that, and, and, a, and a great, well-coached team. I mean, that's why they are where they are um, at the top of the district and, and one of the best teams in the Mid-State. Coach, I don't think it's any mystery to the, the other coaches. You know, obviously, with the technology date huddle, we, we all see what's going on. Everybody knows what's going on. What's your preference defensively? You like man, you like zone, you like a little mixture of both? I think you got to be able to mix, mix it up. I think you have to be able to do both. I mean, we play majority man-to-man -man defense, um, but we will half-court trap. We will two, three. I got five. And new, with your, I length. got five new defenses I'm putting in oh, today. Oh, there we go and tonight. Six Get ready. Oh, now you tell me. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta go. <laughs> I, I was gonna bring that up because I, I you know. Watching you play several times this year already, that that half court trap that they mm -hmm. have with their length can cause problems. Absolutely. You know it's coming. Absolutely. The question is, when is it coming? So I mean, how do you prepare for that? Not not from a strategic standpoint. We put guys, we, they have noodles and they hold them out there, and I don't. We we make them about six nine because <laughs> we're a bunch of midgets. Right? Yeah, I yeah, have yeah. I have kids that learn how to dribble between legs and stuff like that. So we're, like we've it. got this planned <laughs> out. Uh, no, you, you know that is a huge challenge and uh, hopefully we'll uh, figure out a way to prepare for it or get it ready. If you had a Handle. quality win, I've seen several from both, but I want to hear it from your perspective. Quality win, your best quality win you think, man, that was a really good win for us. Probably this week against Centennial maybe? Centennial was a great win. Centennial was a great win. You won that game 58-56. Uh, we got very short amount of time. Give me a little quick recap of what happened there at the very end. I thought that was very interesting. The last Free throw situation. Right. How much yes. time was left? Two seconds? Two seconds left. Two seconds left. We're ahead, Warren. Um, I'm having my player miss the free throw. There was several, four or five times, a lane violation. Because Centennial's out of timeouts. Centennial did not have any timeouts, so they made a shoot it over again. We ended up making it <laughs> and came out with a win, fortunately, against. So if you don't understand what he's trying to do, he lane violation, lane violation. He's trying to get his kids set up for the play. For they the were set up too. To, to run the, the last second. Hail Mary, if you will, and he kept doing the lane volley. Interesting. I, I bet the referees had no earthly idea what to do. Uh, Coach Kyle, you, can't, uh, you, you beat, uh, like I said earlier, you beat D uh, Dixon 67-58, Spring Hill 49-38. What's your top quality win if you had one to hang your hat on? Right Centennial. Now? Uh, it, was, it was our second win. We just uh, had beaten uh, Nolensville, which is another great team in the, in the county. Um, but we competed, went to their place, and it was a great win overtime. Um, shouldn't have gone overtime, but it did. Um, and we were fortunate enough to come out with a W. Well, you're officially off the hot seat as a rookie. All right. Next time you come, you'll be a veteran. Congratulations to both of you on the first half of the season thus far. And uh, best of luck tonight. It's going to be a great game at Independence. Brentwood will be traveling to Independence. Girls tip off at 6, boys to follow at 7.30. Thank you for joining us. We'll see you next time on the Coach's Preview Show.